Alright guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are in Copenhagen in Denmark and I always go on in my videos about how good a beer city Copenhagen is. So I thought it was about time that I showed you a little bit of the destinations and things you can go to in Copenhagen. So we're at the place where it kind of all started actually. We're at the original Mikeler Bar in Victoria Garda in Copenhagen, not too far away from the main central station. So we'll go in and we'll do our usual. I'll show you a little walk around of the place. We'll taste a couple of beers and um, yeah, we'll do our, our usual thing. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Definitely nice to be filming in Copenhagen again. I think this is my third video that I've filmed here so far. So let's go in and check it out actually. <laughs> All right, guys, just to let you see the outside of this place, it is pretty cool, actually. I mean, it's one of these kind of very typical things you'll find in Copenhagen, like a little basement, uh, just a little basement place, actually. They've got their tables outside just now, so you can still sit outside for... I think that this is the 5th of December that I'm filming this for you, and the temperatures are actually still really mild. It's just very nice, actually. But, uh, yeah, just give you a little... Look around actually here on Victoria Garda. So yeah, we go down here. This isn't the main door. I'm going into this one. But yeah, this place is just, you know, very small, very kind of compact actually. And you can see Mary from Peter Pale and Mary, you know. Very, very nice actually. So I'm going to, I've got my beer there already. And uh, yeah, you can just see this is the bar here. Very nice. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. And there you can see, here's the tap list. So lots of different things here. You can see, we'll go, we'll go down the way this time, it just makes sense. So yeah, lots of different things. Evil Twin, Even More Jesus. I need to see about getting a can of that today when I'm here in Copenhagen. Seven Island from Corfu in Greece. The number 16, Mikeler Classic. That's the one we're going to review in a little minute. Few thing, other things, the Mikeler Space Race, number 11, which is a new one, Resting Brewface, I like the name of that, Omnipoil Elsa, Mikeler Passion Pool, Spontan Peach, I do like the Spontan series, a few other things over there, Founders, uh, lots of different founders, some more Seven Island, Mikeler, and the Vestibro Pills. Um, yeah, that's one that I do need to try at some point, but yeah, really nice tap list, this one, 20 different taps for a small bar in Copenhagen, this is pretty cool. But let's go away and do our first beer tasting then. Right guys, time for our first beer tasting then. So for this first one, as I was telling you with a little tap uh, list look that we did a second ago, I picked number 16, which is the Xmas Classic, uh, a Vienna Lager, 5.6% ABV. Um, it should be quite nice. So as you can see and as you'd expect from a Vienna Lager, it's a lovely kind of coppery, uh, you know, kind of coppery reddish amber colour. That's exactly what you'd expect. When it poured, it had a bit of a kind of fawny, slightly beigey coloured head on it. So, yeah, this one is crystal clear. Sometimes with these beers, of course, they can be a little bit hazy. Just really depends. You know, the Czech ones tend to be the sort of Czech um, uh, late sacks, they tend to be a little bit more kind of hazy, if you like, whereas the German Merzens, if you like, which are kind of the equivalent almost of the Vienna Lager, they are slightly different. But you know, it just depends, brewery to brewery, whether it's going to be hazy or clear or not. But yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma of this one. Nothing overly surprising about its appearance. So yeah, straight away with this one, you've got what you expect. Lovely little bit of kind of brown bready character there. That's kind of characteristic of the Vienna Malts, to be honest with you. Um, you get a little bit of a kind of sweet McVitie's digestive biscuit kind of thing out of it. There is a little bit of a toasty caramel. I actually find this beer to be quite grainy. And you know, when it's a Christmas lager, um, maybe there is a little bit of spice going on. Maybe they put a little bit of rye in it or something like that. It does smell a little bit rye-ish, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's almost got a little bit of that kind of English bitter type quality to it in a sense. So maybe a little bit of rye. Um, very kind of cereally to be honest. Definitely more kind of rye like than the um, definitely a little bit more rye like than the than the East Cold classic that I reviewed for you a little while back. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, quite a, a brick quite you know, a lot of brown bread, good little bit of rye character to it, quite grainy, wee bit of McVitie's digestive biscuit on the hoppy side of things. It's quite noble in that sense. Little bit earthy, little bit kind of grassy. We touch floral as well. Fruity wise, um, 
you know, it's got a wee bit of that kind of typical peri apple sort of thing, maybe a wee hint of like a, a red fruity character, but all in all, kind of what you would expect from a Vienna Lager to be honest with you. Let's have a taste of it and see how we go. Yeah, solid beer. I mean, obviously, um, this one's not the kind of craziest beer that you're going to find from Mikeller by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's one of these things. What you look for in these sort of Vienna Lager beers would be authenticity, and it has that, definitely has that. So, yeah, middle of your palate, nice kind of smooth, brown, whole mealy sort of bread kind of thing. Um, in the centre of the palate, we touch of caramel there. As you move out from the centre, it's got a little bit more of that biscuity thing, and you can feel that sort of rye, grainy type character just pushing its way out of this one the further you go into the aftertaste. Um, so, it's, as I say, it's a solid beer. If you compare this to the East Cold, though, the East Cold, I think, was definitely a bit smoother than this and maybe a touch sweeter as well. This one's definitely a more kind of grainy thing, though, and this is specifically Xmas, Christmas um, sort of lager beer. It is going to be um, a little bit more. You would expect a wee bit of that kind of spicy character to it, in fairness, and that's what you get. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I like this one quite as much as the East Cold, in fairness. But yeah, for a Christmas lager, Christmas Vienna lager, it is fairly solid. Yeah, um, hoppy side of things, back corners of your palate, there's a wee bit of earthiness in there. That's typical of your noble hops. It's probably Slovenian hops, or actually, I've never researched this too much as whether there's actually individual hop varieties in Austria. There probably are. In fairness, but you know, it, it tastes like you know Slovenian German type hops that are in this, the noble hops. But yeah, a little bit of earthy presence there in the back corners of the palate. As you move further forward, it gets a wee bit herbal, little touch floral on the front corners of your tongue, then on the very front curve of your palate, a little bit lighter and grassy, which is what you'd expect. Um, front third of your palate, whereas I always say you get those nice, oily, juicy, fruity flavours out of the beer. This one, again, it gives you what you expect and what you want from a Vienna lager. Um, So when you take the beer in, there's a wee bit of a kind of juicy figgy sort of thing to it. You do get a little bit of that initially, but then it's it's quite peary. I find it's got that typical kind of peary ester to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a solid take on the. I've said this a few times in this little mini review. You know, it's a solid take on the Vienna Lager. You can't knock it. Definitely a little bit more spicy and bready and grainy than some other ones that I've had. I do like this this Vienna Lager style, but it's not one that you see all that often. So yeah, it's always nice to try the classic sort of German, Austrian, Central European type beers from Mikeller when they come around. Um, I'd love to try a Doppelbock from Mikeller actually, come to think of it. That's something I've never seen from them so far. Um, but yeah, in terms of the uh, the mouthfeel, it's what you'd expect. It's a uh, fairly light-bodied beer, top end of light-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth, as is typical with Scandinavian beers. It feels very, very clean. There's a little bit of Christmas in there. Hoppy bitterness, I'd be surprised if you're talking more than 20 IBUs with this one. The malt base, as I said, quite smooth, but a little bit sort of grainy and cereally in that sense. We touch a little touch of sweetness in there, and there is just a little bit of fruity character as well. So, um, yeah, that kind of sums up this one. This was the number 16, the Christmas Lager, a Vienna Lager, 5.6% ABV. Solid enough beer. Let's see what else we can get when we're here. We'll maybe do another two tastings, and then we'll call it at that for this uh, for the Mikula Bar. Cheers. All right, guys. So I went for a little bit of sweet jerky. Just, I like jerky, you know? Um, and I thought I was going to get a little bowl, but then they brought out the big sheets of stuff like this. I think this is going to be pretty awesome, so let's just have a taste of this. I think this is going to be pretty cool. So yeah, just to let you see the jerky play properly, uh, I mean, look at this. That is some portion. This is, <laughs> I'm paying in Danish kroners. This is going to be expensive. But um, yeah, look at this big piece of jerky, man. That's pretty damn awesome, actually. That's a cracker of a beer snack. Um, let's have a look at this then and just see how we go. I probably have never tried this in um, just down in Warpigs actually. Mm. That is really nice, yeah. Um, how do you review? How do you review jerky? This is the next thing. Uh, I like it. I love it. <laughs> Beef jerky. Lovely stuff. Try this. I'm going to sit and munch away on this. I need to get another beer for the final tasting, but 
the beef jerky here is pretty cool. This will tide me over until I go to gasoline grill later. Catch you on the next beer tasting guys. Try some of this jerky. Right guys, beer tasting number two then. For this one, I went for something a wee bit different and it just, you know, when you get faced with a tap list of like 20 different beers, at some point you're just going to pick them for the name and for the style and stuff like this. So this one is called the Space Race. It's a, an IPA, but a gluten-free IPA coming in at 6.9% ABV. Um, I've only had one or two gluten-free IPAs, but they can actually be quite interesting. I mean, they do still taste quite authentic, but the way the mouthfeel comes across and things, that's usually where they differ a little bit. But yeah, I just went for this one because of the name. So as you can see, this one comes out a really nice kind of bright sort of mango juice colour. I always like comparing these hazy IPAs to fruit juices and stuff like that. That's just kind of how it goes. Um, so just what they remind me of, to be quite honest with you. So yeah, a good level of haze to this one. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a good level of haze to it. But obviously this is not the soupiest and gloopiest one that you're going to come across. You know, at 6.9%, this one is getting towards the heavy side for a single IPA. You know, probably, you know, 7.5-8% is when you start to get into double territory. And you would expect it. But, you know, the gluten-free the gluten -free IPAs, they are going to be a little bit more... Um, a little bit less hazy, sorry, I should say. But yeah, certainly looks the part for a New England. Let's have a look at the aroma then. So yeah, I mean, straight away with this one, malty side of things, it does actually come across as quite oaty. I can't remember if oats do actually have gluten in them. I'm not a, a celiac, so I've, it's something I've not <laughs> need. To, it's some, not something I would need to care about, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, the, to me, the overall malt base of this beer comes across as being quite oaty in that sense. It's got a lovely smoothness to it, a little bit of a sort of white bready thing in there. But overall, there's not too much to the malt base in this, other than the fact that it's quite. Um, other than the fact that it comes across as quite oaty and smooth, yeah, um, that's what I would say about this. Um, yeah, um, yeah, really nice and smooth oaty kind of character to it. It doesn't even have a little bit of biscuit and things to it. But you know, this was quite a popular thing back in, you know, back a couple of years ago, was that they had West Coast IPAs and things like that where they would only use pale malt and pale ales and stuff. They would only use pale malt and then blast it with hops. I guess in some ways maybe the gluten-free IPA is the same. Maybe they only use oats or, or whatever. I'm really, not, I'm really not sure. This is, this is one of the things where my beer knowledge actually falls down a little bit. Gluten-free IPAs because there's not too many of them. So I need to make a more of an effort on the channel to review more of these. So I'll keep that in mind. But yeah, um, multi-wise, as I say, it comes across quite oaty on the hoppy side of things. Good little bit of floral aromaticity out of this one. Um, you know, I do suspect there's maybe a little bit of Columbus in this. It's a bittering hop. It does have a wee bit of that kind of typical spicy thing from Columbus. Um, it's got a good bit of grassiness as well, but overall the green side of the beer for me leans towards that grassiness and you do get, it just feels as if there's a wee bit of Columbus in this. Um, fruity wise, um, there's something familiar about this. I think this is maybe Simcoe that's in here. It's got that lovely soft passion fruity note about it. Maybe it's, it's I think it could be Simcoe and maybe a bit of Citra, you know, because it's got that soft mango, that soft kind of... Uh, you know that that just that soft kind of slightly apricot -y sort of thing to it. There's maybe a wee touch of gooseberry in there as well on the nose. You do get a wee bit of that slightly stronger passion fruit, and that's what makes me wonder about Simcoe. Um, when you put Simcoe in a New England IPA, of course, it comes across really smooth. If you put it in a West Coaster, it's a bit more oily. If you put it in a Black IPA, it gives you those red fruits. So yeah, I think Simcoe and maybe a little bit of Citra in here. But yeah, certainly smells the part for a New England IPA. You know, or a gluten-free. New England IP, let's taste it and see how we go. Yeah, that is really nice. I mean, for me, there's not much that would really distinguish this beer as being gluten free. Um, yeah, the mouthfeel maybe comes across as a little bit more paleo like than IPA, but again, it actually has a bit of thickness to it, and I think. I really get the impression with this one that the malt base has a lot of, you know, has a big OT component to it. I really get that impression with this beer. So yeah, middle of your palate, you can feel a little bit of a kind of white bready thing in there underneath. But I would say that in the very middle third of your palate, there's a lot of a, a kind of creamy OT character to this one. Um, maybe, 
maybe towards the back it, it gets a little bit smoother and bready. It almost just feels you've got a sort of bready, pale malty layer blanket in the, the middle third and the back third of your tongue. In the middle third of your palate it's a bit more creamy and oaty. I don't think there's much more to say about it other than that in the centre of your palate to be honest with you. Hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate, teeny teeny little bit of earthiness, not a lot, but as you move further forward it's maybe a little bit herbal, you get a wee tiny bit of floral aromaticity on the front kind of corners of your palate, but as is the case always with New England IPAs, you know, it's not it's not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, the New England IPA is a low bitterness style. And at front curve of your palate, around the very front edge of your tongue, light and grassy. Fruity side of things, front third of your palate, as always say, you get that oily bubble, the juicy fruity esters roll out of the beer. Um, yeah, there is something very, very familiar about this. Citra Simcoe, something like this in this beer. Um, yeah, the back of that front third of your tongue, a little bit of a stronger passion fruit. Gives you a wee bit of a kind of citrusy edge to the beer almost. As you move further forward, you can feel the strength of that, that kind of fruity character. Just fades away a wee bit. You start to get a more light mango note. You start to get some apricot-y, papaya type flavours out of this one. Then on the front edge of your tongue, you do have a little bit of a citrusy, zesty character to this. I want to say, I, I, there's something telling me that this is Citra and Simcoe in here. This, the way that the hops and the fruits come out in this is oddly familiar. Citra and Simcoe is an age-old combination. There's something telling me that this is in here. You guys know if you've watched the channel, I love to play Guess the Hops with these beers. So there's just something very familiar about this one. Um, could it be Citra and Simcoe Cryo? Maybe. Um, yeah, in terms of mouthfeel then, um, it's quite, you know, it's quite straight up actually. It's, it's a kind of... Um, I would say a sort of mid-bodied straight in the middle of the spectrum. You know, carbonation is very, very smooth. In the mouthfeel overall, it does have a wee touch of a slightly oily thing to it. Um, but yeah, mainly kind of smooth actually, mainly quite a nice smooth mouthfeel to this one. Hoppy bitterness, again I think this is, you know, 25, 30 IBUs, it's a low bitterness beer this one. Carbonation is uh, carbonation is smooth on this. Malt base is very smooth, slightly creamy, and you also have um, just a lovely bit of juicy fruitiness out of this. But yeah, I think that sums up this beer quite nicely. The Space Race uh, Gluten-Free IPA, 6.9% ABV. We'll probably do one more in here, and I think that'll be me for this little trip to uh, the original Nikola Bar on Victoria Garda. So yeah, let's do one more after this. Let's go. Right guys, okay, um, our last tasting here then for the visit to the original Mikeller bar. So this is a series of beer that Mikeller do that I haven't tried before. This is from the Water series and uh, basically this is a series of German Pilsners that they do at 5% ABV and uh, you know they were telling me that Basically the idea behind this is that they've played with hops, they've played with yeasts, they've played with malt over the years. One of the things they haven't really played with was water until now. So there's a Pacific version, there's a Czech version, I think there's a German version as well. And this particular one that I have is the Burton on Trent version. So it's an English uh, water version. But all beers, all of these beers in this series are Pilsners. 5% ABV, German style Pilsners. So yeah. And as you can see and as you would expect from this one, it's poured a lovely kind of pale golden straw colour. When it came out, it had a head, like a, it was just about a half finger head of, I would say it was perfect white, to be honest. It wasn't even kind of creamy, to be quite frank. But yeah, I mean, in terms of a Pilsner, this one is a little bit hazy. You can see that when I put my fingers behind the glass. Even if I, you know, take the sweat away from the glass, this is a fairly hazy one. But um, yeah, it's kind of what you would expect from a Pilsner, to be quite honest with you. So um, yeah, the, this one looks kind of as you would expect. So yeah, for a Pilsner, bright golden colour, exactly what you'd expect. Let's look at the aroma. Um, I mean, it actually smells a little bit more Hellas-like, to be honest with you. I mean, for a Pilsner beer, I would expect the Pilsner malt to come out a little bit more. This one really does strike me as more of a kind of bready Hellas kind of thing. You get that lovely smooth white bready character out of it. There's a wee bit of that McVitie's digestive biscuity sweetness in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it actually, it really does come across as more like a Hellas to me than a, a Pilsner. But I'm sure we'll see the difference when we actually 
put it when we actually have a look at the, the flavour profile. But, you know, nice smooth white bready notes, a little bit of a biscuity, McVitie's digestive biscuit sweetness, as I said. We tiny touch of honey, something like that. And that's what you'd expect in the malt base of a, a Pilsner beer. Um, hoppy side of things, little touch of earthiness as you're always going to get from Noble Hops. Probably it's Hallertau or Titnanger hops in here. Remember Hallertau, hop producing region in Bavaria. Titnanger is the one in Baden-Württemberg. Um, so it'd be one of these two Noble hop type hops that are in here, I would think. Nice little bit of floral aromaticity, good bit of grassiness. I think the beer leans towards the grassiness on the green side of things. Fruit-wise, little bit of apple, little bit of pear, maybe a wee touch of gooseberry, something like that. Um, you know, it's, it's what you'd expect. I would say in the aroma, though, the malty side of things is key. And with this beer, it really strikes me as being a little bit more Pilsner-like. Uh, sorry, a little bit more Hellas-like than Pilsner, to be honest with you. So, yeah, that's the interesting thing. So, yeah, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma, as I always say. Let's get stuck in. So, this one is the Water Series, the Burton Upon Trent, the English Water Series, basically, if you want to put it into that. 5% German style Pilsner. Let's have a taste. My last beer tasting here at the original Mikula Bar. Slanja Skull. Yeah, it does, you know, it does actually have a little bit of that kind of Pilsner quality. Um, but I think, you know, I would wonder if I was blind tasting this without knowing what it was. I'm not sure if I would think this was a Pilsner right away because the crispness of it, some Pilsners that you can get can be very dry. This one's actually very wet in its mouthfeel. And for me, when it comes to Pilsners, mouthfeel is, is the key thing. And don't get me wrong, this is a nice beer. Um, but you know, it is, it is the age old thing. That, the fact that this is an English, that they've treated the water to be like English water here, maybe that's what makes it feel a little bit different. Um, that could be the thing, you know, the German water, of course, is very different from the English water. And, and again, it goes to show you, these little variables you have when it comes to brewing beer, they can play a big role, you know. Um, so yeah, the, um, how would you say, it's, it's very wet, kind of pills to hear this one. Middle of your palate, you get that lovely, slightly bready note. I think the further you go into the aftertaste, you do start to get some of these kind of crisp Pilsner malty kind of things out of it. In the very centre of your palate, there's a wee bit of a sweet... Uh, I would maybe say there is a wee bit of a straight-up caramel, but it's really a little bit more McVitie's digestive biscuit kind of thing that comes out of this beer. Um, maybe a little bit of honey as well, maybe a little bit of that sort of honeycomb thing. I do get a bit of that out of this one in fairness. Um, I like, I do like how this goes together actually, it's just interesting, it's a very very wet pilsner in my sense. It, the flavour profile of this one is what you would expect of the style, but the mouth feels a little bit different, I think that's fair to say. Hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate, a little bit of earthiness there as you'd expect. As you move further forward on the sides of the palate it's a little bit herbal, nice little bit of floral aromaticity on the front corners of the tongue. Then round the very front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and uh, and grassy in that sense. Um, on the front tip of your palate, as I always say, this is front third of your palate, it's where you get the fruity notes out of the beer. If you go towards the back of that, there's a wee bit of a citrusy note. There's, um, you know, you'll get a wee bit of an apple peary sort of thing coming out of this one, a little bit of gooseberry. But the fruity side of this beer is exactly what you would expect. It's an interesting one for me. I find this very, very interesting. It's very easy to drink. Um, and I think the more that I drink of this, the more that I sort of warm to the mouthfeel of it, actually. Because um, it does have that crispness. We should talk about the mouthfeel now. It does have that crispness in the background of it, but it just feels a bit wetter. Uh, and it's all about the number, the mineral content you get. A hard water, of course, has a high mineral content. A soft water has not a lot of mineral content in it. Um, so yeah, and there's things like magnesium, calcium, all of these kind of things that you'll get in uh, in water. Um, but it's a lovely, it is a beer list. This is one that definitely kind of grows on me. I, it, you guys watching the channel know I love lagers, I love pilsners and things like this. I think they're very underrated styles. And I do like this one, but I think this is the sort of beer that you treat as an educational beer. I mean, 
as I said, this series has four in it so far. Um, and it, it's the sort of beer that you try, you try them next to each other and you compare them. The base beer is very good. Um, but is it the sort of meat killer beer that you go out of your way to try? That's what I'm not sure about. That's the that's the thing you get with this one. But is it a very solid Pilsner beer? Absolutely. Mouthfeel wise, I think it's top end of light bodied this one. Carbonation has a good little bit of Christmas to it, which is what you expect of a Pilsner. The malty base has a little bit of smoothness to it. It's quite nice and sweet. Um, hoppy bitterness, I think you're not going to get too much of this. 25 IBUs, maybe 30, and you've got you know a little bit of you've got a good little bit of malty smoothness and sweetness in there some Christmas comes out later and just a little bit of a fruity juicy character as well but overall very very nice Pilsner one of the wetter ones in terms of its mouthfeel in my mind so let's wrap up this last and final taste from there we'll do what we always do we'll go outside I'll give you my final thoughts about the Mikeler bar and uh, we'll wrap up the video there catch you guys in a second Alright guys, so just to round off my little visit to the original Mikela Bar on Victoria Gare, um, this was really nice to come here again. I think this is the third time that I've been here. Um, usually in Copenhagen I go to Warpigs and uh, places like that, but to come here was pretty cool actually. Um, I had, you know, three different little small beers which was really cool. I had that big slab of jerky which was good and that cost... I think it was 130 Danish, if I remember rightly, which is roughly about, what, 180 Swedish kroner. So that works out about 18 euros. It was okay for Danish prices. You know, they earn a lot of money and stuff here. It's a little bit more pricey, but yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a place that I definitely recommend that you visit if you find yourself in Copenhagen. This is one of the places where the whole Danish craft beer scene really started to kick off. So get yourself here to Copenhagen. Awesome, awesome beer city. And uh, the Mikeler Bar on Victoria Gada is kind of where it all began. So definitely come here and have a little look. My one criticism of this little trip though was that we didn't have too many Mikeler stouts on. And I kind of make a rule in these videos that I try to drink the home beers. There were some very good beers in there. Evil Twin, you know, even more Jesus. The the um, Seven Island stouts are very good as well. But I would have liked to have at least one Mikeler stout there. That's my only criticism there. But as I say, get yourself to Mikeler Bar on Victoria Gada, the original of the bar out of all the new ones that they have. Until the next time though, slander just now, I hope you guys enjoyed another out and about video and you will be seeing another one up here very very soon. Slander, school, cheers, make sure you check out the Mikula bar on Victoria Garda in, uh, in Copenhagen. Cheers.